The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Welcome everyone to Performing the Bronx with Rina Valentin and Ana Rocafela Garcia. I'm Nicolás to meet Esteves Raful Espejo, a very long name, you can call me Nicolás. And I am excited and happy and thrilled to be here with two iconic Bronx sites, one of whom I met many, many moons ago um, through um, my friend and brother in the arts, Edwin Ramoran, and that is Rina Valentin. And I'm so, I feel so full of energy just by being here together with you, Rina, and by looking at your reds and your yellows uh, and your blacks and, and your smile. Thank you. And I'm happy to be here as well with Ana Rocafela Garcia. Both of you are legends in your own right. Ana Rocafela Garcia and I met through a common friend and colleague, La Bruja, who is also another iconic Bronx site with whom I co-performed the Bronx. So I remember being at El Garaje, you know El Garaje Rocafela in San View and asking La Bruja, who should I co-perform the Bronx with? And she said, well, Rockefeller. And Rina and I met path again when we were working together on an homage to Benny Bonilla, one of the living legends of our borough, and the man who might have invented the beat to Boogaloo. And so performing the Bronx involved all these legendary figures like Rina and Rocafela. And the idea is that I invite them to guide me into their worlds, their portals, if we might call them so, and to mentor me, to walk me into different, into their world, into their views of our beloved borough. With that said, I would like to invite you to watch a video co-created by Rockefeller and myself, filmed by Jeff Jones in the cross world. In the, how would I call that? I think that um, Caridad de la Luz, La Bruja, calls the Bronx, uh, and I'm always confused, I think she calls it the center of the world or the center of the universe. Uh, please forgive me if I am misquoting you, but uh, Hans point the crossroads, that's what I wanted to say, the crossroads of the world, the navel of the world in many, in many ways. So with that said, I invite all of you to watch this video with Rockefeller, an homage to this iconic legendary fellow bronze site. Rockefeller, it is so amazing that you found this rug here, this carpet. It's like a Where? magic carpet. 
right here in the middle of Hunts Point. For me, it's a dance floor. It's like tough. And so if you're gonna dance on it, you have to be tough too. So it's almost like a relationship of strength, of power. I feel that we're always fighting against gravity. So gravity is energy. And it's from the earth, it's from the universe. But I also have energy, I also have a force. So I like to break because I'm on the floor working against gravity, working with my muscles. And I'm a woman, so nobody believes I'm gonna want to be on the floor, right? I'm supposed to be clean, sophisticated, you know, looking nice. And bang, bang, here I am on the floor, on my knees, on my back, no fear. It's something that we look down, even at the phrase falling down, like we, we tend to tell people like, get up. In life, it seems like something is always trying to bring you down, you know? So upper class, lower class, breaking is just turning all of that upside down and just saying, arrebe. no, we're going to reverse all of that you're thinking. Whatever you think of me, I'm going to shift. I'm going to change that right now when I get on the floor. Because I'm on the floor, I'm touching the earth and now my energy is vibrating to you. And you may not know it, but you're drawn. You want to see, you want to look, or maybe you want to do. Hip hop and breaking especially is like a warrior dance. There's a, a dialogue I'm creating with the spectator. I feel my heritage is showing up. I feel a connection to the capoeiristas, the original capoeiristas who came from Angola to Brazil. There's a connection here, you know? When I do my top rock, we call it the Latin step because it looks like salsa, but a little more aggressive. <laughs> um, so I do feel an ancestry when I break, you know? Es una mezcla. And I just, I'm all in it. I, I hear the drum in my boy. I'm done. I'm in there. Is there anything particular about standing on the ground or connecting to the ground here in the Bronx? I was originally born in East Harlem, El Barrio, but there was something about the Bronx that saved my family. There has been a trajectory of Puerto Ricans and New Yorkans moving from El Barrio, that I feel like that legacy hasn't been acknowledged, that migratory path of one barrio to another barrio. In my case, I came from the Dominican Republic and some of my family came from Lebanon. So we're standing here, at the, I feel like, at the crossroads of the world. My father and mother immigrated from Puerto Rico. And so many people that are immigrating here, whether it's Bangladesh, North Africa, we're all here looking for a better life. And there is love. And there is respect. I have to say that if I had not come to the Bronx, maybe I would not have become this B-girl, this breaking ambassador for hip hop. And so the Bronx is special. It's a good mix of people here. We recognize each other's struggle. So when I see somebody, I know that they're struggling with something. And there's compassion and there's solidarity. They may paint us with an image of like savagery and we have no manners, we're impolite. It's not true. There's a lot of us here that love where we are, how far we've come. There's a lot of respect. So, you know, I love touching the Bronx. I love being on the floor. I don't mind being on the sidewalk, teaching in community centers, being in a theater here or somebody's apartment uh, in the park. Um, I do love the Bronx and I will be here as long as I can. <laughs>
peoples, no matter what is going on, you stay strong and you rock on. Cause you know we rock on. And you know we rock on. Wonderful. Well, that, that video uh, brings so many questions and, and makes me think of so many insights. I would love to hear from both of you. And of course, it points to moving and dancing and, and uh, motion in the Bronx. And I, Rockefeller, what were some of the movements we made when, we, when you were teaching me and guiding me? I don't remember all of them. I remember one that um, asked us to point to the sky. I remember that. We look forward, we pointed to the sky, and then we brought our hands to, one hand to the heart, I think. And so with that said, I'm very curious, maybe more so now than before, about moving in the Bronx. How, how, does, one, how does the Bronx move, and how does one move in the Bronx? And I know that um, there could be some uh, answers that could stereotype people. This is not where I'm coming from. I'm not looking for how one how one is supposed to move in the Bronx or um, uh, the kind of movement that I think might identify Bronx side, like one stereotypical movement. But I'm thinking more in a in a way that connects our bodies here in the Bronx to architecture, to politics, to streets and alleys, and to places like Banana Kelly. I mean, there's probably people here who don't know about Banana Kelly. Banana Kelly is a street that's shaped like a banana, and that's where it got its name from. Um, how does one move in the Bronx, and how does the Bronx move? Uh, in terms of, again, politics, community, uh, beauty and also strangeness. Um, there's such a strange beauty here in this borough. It's a rare beauty, I would say. Yeah. I'll post a question to both of you. I don't know, Rockefeller, do you want to answer? Okay. I just want to shout out Rockefeller, man. That was dope. And it was your song, too. You sang it, right? That was your yeah. song? <laughs> Yes, yep. yes, yes. <laughs> thank you, Rena. Rena, thank you. You've been right there with me all along, let me tell you. And Rena's definitely legendary when it comes to hip hop and dance. So, you know, we all kind of started from this um, the same kind of launching pad. Correct. And from there, we've all gone into different platforms and lanes and, you know, channels of expression. Uh, the Bronx is a beautiful place. And I mean, there's so many things I could say about how we move in the Bronx, you know. Um, but I have to say that, one, you have to be seen, right? You must be seen. <laughs> um, and second, it's like you got to go and do something. You got to go and do something. Where are you going? What has to get done today? What's on your to-do list Everybody is busy. Everybody is making it happen. You know, we always say keep the fires burning. I don't know if that's from like, you know, when it was cold and, you know, you had to like build a fire to keep yourself warm or like tufa, you know, you put the oven on so your apartment could be warm. You're always doing. It's in the doing for me. And so I think I came from that generation where we were watching our uh, and our elders and they were doing. They were getting things done. Banana Kelly, Southeast Bronx, you know, community development. There were so many organizations, Citizens Advice Bureau, and even my generation, The Point, um, you know, Bronx Academy of Arts and Dance. There were just so many ways to make life better. Yeah. And and that's that's your responsibility. In the Bronx, you have to make your life better, so let's go. What you got? Where are the connections? What relationships are you nourishing and, and keeping alive? So that's one of the ways I feel we're moving. We're moving 
in the Bronx. I don't know, Rena, I'm sure you have a lot to add as well. Yeah, no, I'm like all hyped over here on the sidelines just listening to you because our history is so rich, you know? And and the fact that you even opened up acknowledging that my origins are, are from hip hop or, you know, and from up rock, we'll say, right? Because most people don't even know that about me. But the, the, the beauty of just watching this, um, this story uh, capturing you and your legacy and knowing that we met under those circumstances very, very many years ago, but you pursued it and you continued with it and, and you still move with it. And you're you're a legend, of, you, you're a living legend within our time, right? And so you're, you're worldly known, right? And, and in addition to that, you know, I don't know if most people even know this, but you're a professor of it. Like oh, yeah. there's an entire subject around the fact that this is what you've mastered. Yeah. That, that's phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mama. Thank you. Um, it's just something that I think I was really inspired and influenced by the people I was watching. So I can always say me, but it's who, who was I watching? You know, who was I being influenced by? And I think at the time, Rena, that me and you grew up, the Bronx was going through it. Yeah. <laughs> it was going through it. It was. And yeah. It, and it and was, yet... Yeah, no, it was, it was, but check it out. We were there transforming it together, right? Um, which uh, you mentioned, uh, the point, you mentioned Bronx Academy of Arts and Dance. I mean, those movements, to, for me, they're, they're so symbolic. And um, although everybody has gone in their different ways, and, and or even going back to the question that Nicolas had asked us with regards to the way you move, um, it's really about the way you dance, right? Because everything shifts. And so we have to pivot according to circumstances. And I think um, coming from an urban upbringing, we know how to move uh, quick and, and, and sharp and instinctively. So um, I, I don't know if that's how he was, uh, the, the kind of answer he was uh, searching for, but from a metaphoric standpoint, I think that we have um, these instincts that are so sharp that allow our bodies to just bob and weave accordingly. And um, for lack of a better word, I, I call them survival skills. Yeah, she's in agreement. <laughs> she's like, yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm piggybacking off of what you were saying, right? In, in the sense of like in your video, when you were talking about just connecting to Mother Earth and having an energy and being uh, conscious of that energy and understanding that even though this is what you're projecting, it's still connected to this overall source. And, and I think right now where we are in this pandemic, it's pretty much checking everybody and checking that out about themselves and diving a little deeper. So the fact that you, um, Rockefeller, are like willing to just put yourself on the floor and, and, and use it as a means of, of signifying your connection to Mother Earth, like, that's priceless. It's priceless, even though you're dancing on the concrete, that you're staying Thank in the you. concrete, because we live in the concrete jungle. You hey. know? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would get it. I knew you would understand. And I think a lot of people are, are amazed by breaking, by the dance, but they don't understand why. And, you know, to actually touch the earth and put your knees on it, put your back on it, you know, uh, your forehead, you know, it's, it's you embracing all that the ground has to offer, even if it might be dirty, even if it might, you know, not be uh, as smooth and, and um, safe as maybe your living room, <laughs> you know, you just embrace it and you take it, like you said, your instinct, you know, you have to shift. So I hope we answered your question, Nicholas. We could talk. <laughs> we could talk. <laughs> I know we could talk forever about moving, moving and movement in the Bronx. And I, I really enjoyed two of your, two of the insights that came up from you and one is instinct and how we are so quick here. We're so quick to get the rhythms. We are quick to react to things in a way that's heartfelt. And I also very much enjoy your answer, Rockefeller, when you said uh, something about how we like to be seen here in the Bronx. Um, I mean, look at us. Look, look at earrings, at Rina's red, and look at my necklace. We, you know, we pride here in being cool and also in, in being at the forefront of um, fashion, 
creative fashion coming right, right, right from the neighborhood, right from our homes, right from the community. So with that said, um, I'm curious about some of the energetic shifts that you might be perceiving in the Bronx or that you might see in the Bronx. I mean, you have been here longer than me. Uh, what are some of the movements in that sense that you see at a more of a, at a general level? Uh, there's so much conversation about the Bronx um, being, quote, unquote, the last frontier. There's questions about gentrification. There's fear of um, people coming in and displacing those who have been here for so long. Um, can you talk about some of those shifts, maybe? And you don't have to focus necessarily on gentrification, but maybe if you can answer um, that question from a more, perhaps from a more, more um even spiritual perspective, what do you feel, maybe rather than what do you see energetically about our borough? You want me? All right, I mean, uh, I can rock with this. Uh, you know, for all off the, the, the bat, like the first thing that comes to mind is that um, the Bronx is, uh, is kind of getting almost like a, a makeover in, in a sense. And, um, and there's that, that's beautiful um, it, it, within its own sense, right? Because it, it kind of brings value to the land and the, the borough or the mainland, because the Bronx is one of the only boroughs that's part of the mainland. Um, however, there's the cultural component in which we, I think this is where we uh, play a role that should should not be displaced and um and what does that displacement look like right because really it's a matter of perspective because there's so many different cultures within the bronx it's just really a matter of us sustaining it and making sure that we pass it on to the next generation and even if it's fused with something else that we all make it our business to have our history documented and when i say history i'm really referring more to our urban history i mean there's the the history that we learn in school and then there's our own history that is just as, as important because um uh, individuals such as ourselves with this urban uh, lens, we, we need to have somebody to refer to and to relate to. And so I think in that aspect, um, I, I kind of can rock with the movement. Uh, we pretty much have no choice, but I also feel that it is also our responsibility to pass it forward from a cultural perspective. I, uh, I agree 100%. Yes. And the only thing I would really add to that is just that I do feel like politically people like our council members or like, you know, someone like Alejandro Casio, you know, Cortez, uh, they're bringing this other image of the Bronx with them, you know, knowledgeable, um, intellectual, um, but also social, you know. So I think that there is a shift and so I feel like there's something that is combating this negative stigma that we've had for so many years. I feel like Rena said the history of even something like you said, Banana Kelly, which is an organization that helped to rebuild. You know, I feel like there is a film called Decade of Fire, which is also trying to uplift the contributions of the actual dwellers here who rebuilt and remain. You know, they stayed, they fought, they rebuilt. Um, so I think there are shifts happening. People are trying to reframe the narrative. Of course, including, you have to include some of the elements of, you know, of course, you know, danger and some of the environmental pollution that we have dealt with forever. So that has to, that has to be there. But I'm glad it's not the only focus now. So I'm really happy, you know, that there is a shift energetically. Uh, like Rena said, pride you know, in who we are and what we do, and that, you know, things are getting more um, pleasant, you know. There are parks now that have been completely renovated, you know, Shorehaven by the water, Bronx River itself has been cleaned. It's, uh, you know, I think that there is a shift, so I'm glad you asked that question. Me too, and I like that you referred to Decade of Fire. I, I like uh, that you, you um, 
reference that film. It's a wonderful documentary that I recommend everyone go see, um, Decade of Fire. And um, it, it, can, it kind of gives you a little bit of the trajectory from when the Bronx was burning um, to where it is now and how uh, people are holding on to its new beauty and, and um, the culture that was built from it, right? Um, and, and just in, in what uh, Rockefeller was referencing as far as um, how there is um, gentrification occurring uh, in New York in, in its entirety, right? And then there's this reality of us pretty much coming together to make it our business to make sure that our voices are heard, that we're visible. I mean, it's what I do in my occupation working for BronxNet uh, and providing a platform for our artists and our um, organizations and just, you know, the activists, everybody who's really making a difference on the ground. Uh, and, and I think it's important that we acknowledge them, you know? Uh, it's great to have your favorite celebrity, but we have a lot of local celebrities within our immediate community that can certainly uh, be acknowledged and, and uh, deserve to have that love on that level. Yes, and let's just really quickly mention Vivian Vasquez is the woman who made that film, and it's distributed by Third World Newsreel. So it's important to not only name her, she's from the Bronx, she lived through the decade of fire, but also to know that somebody actually put that film on their on their catalog. They found it worthy, and they, you know, you can download and stream it. So again, the possibilities are endless, and this borrow is proof. <laughs> And, and as um, it has been said before, it was the people who saved the, the Bronx. It was the people of the Bronx who saved the Bronx. People like you, Rockefeller, and Rina, and your parents, and, and those in your families and your neighbors. And I want to mention the names of some of the people who helped save the Bronx and who are working to make a stronger Bronx. Um, Lisa Ortega, fabulous Lisa Ortega, Mili Bonilla, Danilo La Chapelle, who is no longer here with us, and Wanda Salaman. And there's many more. And that doesn't mean that I don't acknowledge them, but we're running out of time because we want to see, we want to watch Rina's video. But you are all here in our hearts. And before we go to Rina's video, I would like for each one of us to point to a part in our bodies where we feel the Bronx. Could be the heart, could be the mind, could be, I don't know, I'm not gonna tell you. Where do you feel the Bronx, Rockefeller? Just quickly. In your hands, Rina. I feel <laughs> it right here in my heart and in my stomach. I don't know, it's connected. When I, I mean in my eyes, when I hear something about the Bronx, when I'm traveling and something Bronx com comes up, I get teary. Uh, yeah. So it's maybe here, here, here. I don't know, I can really look. Here, right? <laughs> your feet. <laughs> With no socks, I love it, I love it. Mine Everything. is the mouth. Mine is the mouth because that's what I do. I talk about the Bronx all the time. Um, I, I represent the Bronx. I make sure that we are presented in, um, in the manner in which we exist right now um, on a broader level. So I carry it in, in my, my, my thoughts, in my throat, in my mouth, on my yes. tongue. That, yes, that's where you. it resonates the most for me. So I feel it here. And when I do that, maybe we can go straight to the video that we want to watch now.
Santiago, como Santiago manda. Limpialo. Caravana, siete años. Limpialo, como Santiago manda. Limpialo. Limpialo, como Dios manda. Limpialo, como Santiago manda. Limpialo. Sala, maleco, maleco, sala.
to be a part of that magic that, um, yes, we must acknowledge uh, Angel Rodriguez, um, who flew in from Florida for that piece, and, uh, and of course, Michael Max Navi uh, for participating in this magical piece that um, really continues to just resonate in my heart uh, after experiencing it. So I'm so happy you enjoyed it, Rockefeller. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. And, you know, we are New Yorkans here, the Diasporicans, as they call us, <laughs> um, in the Bronx, knowing that we are, our hearts are still connected to Puerto Rico and the ancestry and the, the mixing of our Taino, Arawak, and our African heritage. And, and here we are in the Bronx, uh, remixing it again. So exactly. thank you. Thank you again. Thank you, Rima. Oh. Oh, Nicolas, thank you, thank you. I'm shaking. I was shaking when we were filming. I think I wanted to shake and I allow my body to shake to release. And shaking is a great way to release trauma. Uh, that's why people shake when they are afraid. That's a way of letting go of fear and whatever is going to lodge in your And so I was shaking and dancing and moving with, with Rina. Um, I have more questions. And you mentioned Puerto Rico. You mentioned... Uh, being New Yorkan, you mentioned the island. I was born in the Dominican Republic. I'm a, um, by birth, I'm Lebanese Dominican. Uh, some of my family came from Lebanon. Lebanese Dominican, and then I moved to Dominican, Dominican, Dominican York, who became a Bronxite. I, I was baptized in 2011 by Bill Aguado, El Padrino de las Artes del Bronx, the godfather of the arts in the Bronx. He's my godfather. Yes, um, yeah. Baptized me with water from the Bronx River. Wow. Interesting. Susan wow. Newmark. Susan Newmark was born in Charlotte Gardens uh, way back. And I wanted to have these different perspectives. Uh, Bill being from the, uh, or his family being from the Caribbean and Susan Newmark, her family being of Jewish origins. And I know that those are some of the histories, some of the many histories that informed the Bronx. Um, so, but moving on, I figured, and I have been figuring out that, yes, I'm baptized as a Bronxite. I wasn't born here, but I got baptized. Um, how, and, and then I, I figure, like, I can't really be a Bronxite without being Puerto Rican, too, or New Yorkan. And because so much of the culture here in the Bronx right now and during the last, I don't know, four or five decades, I have been informed by Puerto Rican cultures and by the island and by, uh, by all of that, by poetry. I'm thinking about Pedro Pietri and on and on and on and music and... Uh, dance from Puerto Rico, salsa was supposed to have been born here in New York. I mean, that's debate. That's being debated. Um, could have been born in the Bronx. I don't know. Uh, but how in the world? I don't want to use the curse because I was going to say how in the. But as a good thing, how in the world does one become Puerto Rican or New Yorkan? Uh, can you shed some light on that? I don't know. Oh my gosh! You know, um, that's interesting. You, right? you hear people talking about becoming American. Mm -hmm. You hear people talking about like becoming quote unquote American or what I call U.S. American because all of us 
including you, Rina, Rockefeller, myself. We are American. I mean, I am American by birth. I was born in the place where the whole thing that we call America now started, the Dominican Republic, and then it moved on to the other islands, to our islands, to the Caribbean. That's what this whole thing called America was born. So we are Americans by birth and by origin. But tell me, how does one become Puerto Rican or New York Rican? I have no idea. I've been trying to to continue the Bronxite uh, process. You know... I, I, I want to just say, uh, just that's a very fascinating question <laughs> because it's like, you know, this one. Tell me. So, do you read it? I'm like, uh, well, first, let's just start with um, uh, stating that I do identify with my African, Indigenous, and European ancestry because um, our our culture, our race is is mixed. We're a mixed race. I, I always consider us to be the original rainbow people. Um, and so um, there's this, uh, I guess, need to uh, identify with all components of, of what makes us up. And and, and so I, I want to say what, what makes us New Eureka first and foremost is the fact that we embrace uh, Everybody, we embrace everybody. Um, I was raised in in uh, a household that uh, a family that go all the way from really black to really white. Um, you know, there's German in my in my background. There's um, French in my background. There's of course um, indigenous uh, Taino, and um, there's all the this rainbow that goes all the way from one extreme to the other. That based on having that in my upbringing has always allowed me to just kind of like be inclusive uh, with everybody. Uh, And I think that's one of the characteristics that I feel most New Yorkans carry is like, we really, it it don't matter what you look like. It matters how you show up. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just saying. Yeah. I do want to acknowledge because you said Pedro Pietri, and I just want to acknowledge um, Miguel Algarín, who just recently passed away. And um, and in, in acknowledging him, you know, may he rest in peace and we're sending lots of love and light to his soul. I, I want to also mention that part of the reason that I have Michael Max Navi participate in this particular piece is because within the, the piece itself, I had Michael representing community and um, Angel representing spirituality, uh, which are aspects of of who I am and um, the reason Michael was representing community with the camera obviously is because my connection to community is through BronxNet television and um, for those who may not know um, back in 2006 I want to say um, Michael Max Navi discovered me at the New York and Poets Cafe and put me on air for the pilot episode of Open and the rest is history. So uh, I just want people to be aware of that. I don't know if they're aware of that. You know, I had a residency at the New York Rican Poets Cafe. It was once a month. I did it for a whole year. Michael was there capturing with the late, great Ibrahim Gonzalez, who was also with BronxNet at the time. And, um, and then Michael gave me the opportunity to participate in the Beta Awards. And from the Beta Awards, I was uh, picked up to host the pilot episode of Open. And I have been the host since. Which is 14. You're an awesome host. You're awesome. You're charismatic. You're knowledgeable. You're definitely funny. You are funny too. (laughs) So, congratulations on that. That's a beautiful legacy, beautiful journey. Thank you for representing us on BronxNet. People are happy to see you. Even on the street, I walk with you on certain parades and people are like, Rita, I love your show. That's so awesome. Congratulations that, that on your the hard work. me coming from you, Rockefeller. Congratulations. And may you continue, may you continue to hold space for all the people that you are featuring on your show. You do such a good job. Thank you. I've been on your show. Thank you. I, I love having you on my show. Are you kidding me? I love all the work you do. That's what we're here for, to make right. sure that everybody knows how our people are rolling and how they're progressing and how they're making a difference, living a purposeful life, right? Yes. Yes. And I think being New Yorkan is that, you know, you are able to extend hospitality, extend compassion um, to your neighbors, to the people around you, you know, there's always this respect for God, respect for the deities, but then there's also like this compassion 
you know, um, charitable type of like uh, solidarity that we offer the people around us, whether you live in the projects, a five story walk up or, you know, the new building that just, you know, opened. Uh, Puerto Ricans and New Ricans are always open and ha willing to help. Of course, you know, we're also very defiant, you know, because of all the colonialism and all the oppression that our ancestors have been through. You know, so we're going to always be defiant. We're going to always ask questions like, what's in that? And what's in it for me? And how far do I got to walk? How much do I got to carry? <laughs> you know, but if it feels like this is a good thing, we're there for you. We'll give you our shirt off our backs. You know, we work hard. We play hard. You know, if we if we didn't have enough, we'll make it. So if, you know, I, I, you know, my parents maybe didn't have the record player and the stereo system, we had instruments, you know, right. like, you know, and people. If you didn't have instruments, instruments, you have pots and pans, right? To make exactly. The music. Exactly. And it could be for music or it could be for the, la, you know, the la mancha, the protest, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, and so, you know, we were just looking at images of Adrian Rodriguez. And I, I also want to just um, elaborate a little more on the fact that part of being New Yorican is our intergenerational respect, right? Because um, Adrian Rodriguez is our elder. And, um, and while I had a very, like, tight relationship with Angel so many years ago when the movement of the point was in, in fruition and he was uh, conducting his workshops over there, he really touched a lot of lives. And while he relocated to Florida, and um, Nicolas said, uh, you know, we may have uh, a budget, a small budget for a percussionist. And um, and I was like, OK, awesome. That's wonderful, because I was a little married to having a percussionist attached to the piece because I wanted to make sure that the spirituality aspect of, of, of me was in the storytelling. And um, and while I have access to many percussionists here in New York, uh, for whatever reason, um, and it didn't matter what it took, I, I ended up flying Angel Rodriguez here from Florida to participate in this piece. And um, after looking at the video, it all makes sense because um, it wasn't just about his playing. It was about his energy, it was about the respect, it was about um, the, who he is to me, to us in the Bronx, in, in New York, in the New York in history. I mean, he's phenomenal. And, and, um, and I'm ever so grateful that he said yes to the call and showed up the way he did. He was amazing in this video. And I, and I want to acknowledge you as well, Nicolas, for uh, accommodating that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Rina, for introducing me to such figures. Uh, I was very, very moved by Angel, and, and we got to work together because of you. There's more names that keep surfacing for me. My neighbor, my next door neighbor, I could, he's, he's not longer here with us in physical form, but I can almost like move my hand and touch the wall that connected us. Um, Carlos. Uh, my goodness, I got so emotional that, I, that I'm forgetting his, his, his last name. Uh, the photographer who documented like four decades of history in the Bronx, um, Carlos Ortiz, Carlos Ortiz, who documented the history of our neighborhoods for four decades and who died uh, several years ago. And, and some of the institutions, he, he was uh, of Puerto Rican descent and some of the institutions here in the city are of Puerto Rican descent as well, El Museo del Barrio, who is a uh, home to me and to many of us. I know that Rina, you have been involved with involved with them. Uh, I'm pretty sure, Rocafera, that maybe you have done work with them, I don't know. I mean, El Museo del Barrio and the Bronze Council on the Arts and on and on and on. It's, and I feel that for me personally, Puerto Ricans have been mentors and guides in school, outside the streets, in everyday life, uh, you too included. And uh, uh, there's, there's so much uh, possibility and potentialities to create partnerships with the, um, those who are uh, arriving into the U.S. Uh, after you. And I, I'm talking about the decades. When I mean arriving, I don't mean like yesterday or now. I mean like uh, decades after you, like Dominicans, Domin now Dominican Yorks, and, and how we are all 
um, mixing and, and experimenting with our culture. I know like uh, Guate Rica and Santo Rican, who are the Dominicans who are also Puerto Rican. I don't know if you heard that term, Santo Rican. Guate Rican, the Guatemalans and Puerto Ricans. And this, I heard of a, uh, I heard, I heard of a Mexican, Mexican. I have a Mexican friend. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. The mix oh, is beautiful. It the, is. You know, we've always been ready to mix, but we always make sure that uh, we don't dilute who we are. And so I think one of the things that uh, some of my African American friends have told me is like, man, you guys with that flag. And I'm like, I know, right? We just can't get away from the flag, <laughs> you know? So we'll mix. We're happy to mix, but we're not diluting right. or forgetting who we are because it may be a tiny island, but, man, we are not going to be erased. That's for right. sure. That and I think a lot of people come to America and they're under this assumption that you're supposed to melt and just, you know, acclimate. And you can for a little, but you can never, ever just erase and toss out your grandparents. No, that's not happening with us. And I right, think right. that that pride and that respect, like Rena was saying, for generations, that has told a lot of immigrants who, who encounter us, taught them, no, be proud. of If you're Bangladeshi, be proud. If you're Moroccan, be proud. Oh, yeah. You're from Turkey, be proud. You know, the mix is going to happen. You can't help it. But you got you have to hold on yeah. to, to the past. And the best way to do that is to make sure that you you sustain relationships with your elders, those who are really rooted in the mm -hmm. cultural values, right? Uh, within our our culture, uh, this bomba y plena and bomba y plena, you know, it, it's a, a sound, it's a music that I learned of later because my culture is so rich. I, it was important for me to learn about the roots of Bomba en Plena, how to dance Bomba en Plena, and what its origins of, of being a means of, of just providing news amongst the village. That was the, the forms of communication. So, you know, we're a musical group of people where we find music and song for everything, which I think is so awesome. Yeah, yeah. And we also love, like, plant life. We love nature. Yeah. You know, we love the coqui, which is a little frog. We love that that creature. We love uh, agriculture. Believe it or not, we are an agricultural people. You know, it's a shame that, you know, of course, we have all these supermarkets and all this stuff happening with the American lifestyle, but we are an agricultural people. Historically, we knew how to plant. We knew the, the cycles of the moon. We knew how to sustain. We were self-sustained until colonialism and, you know, slavery and all of that came in. But we knew what we were doing. And if we are left to our own devices, we will grow our food again. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Believe it. Which is where we are, where, where we're getting to now in life, right? Uh, just in <laughs> our current circumstances, it's very questionable the food, everything. Um, and, and with that said, I do want to say that one of the beauties of, of being raised New Rican and Puerto Rican is always being shipped to Puerto Rico in the summer for the entire summer <laughs> since, uh, since birth. You know, um, when I was younger, I used to cry and kick and scream because it was a different, you know, environment altogether. And um, my Spanish wasn't so great and I had to learn how to fend for myself. But now as an adult, I wish somebody would ship me to Puerto Rico every summer. <laughs> yes. Thank you for that. I do remember that. En la finca, con mis primas, en agua buena. Yep. <laughs> You're right. It was definitely culture shock, but it was a blessing. Don't forget that we still have Las Casitas and they're not going to go, but we have to wrap it up. We can talk forever. Um, thank you for opening the path to so many Latinx, Latina, Latinos, Caribeños, Caribeñas, Caribeñes who came after you for taking the burn for speaking Spanish and talking about Spanish. Um, I would like to invite you very briefly, like 20 seconds, to maybe say a blessing. I'm very big on blessings in Spanish. You can say it in Spanish, in Spanglish. You can say it in Dominicanish, like Josefina Baez would say. You can use an intergalactic language. You can maybe say it in tongues. Just, if you can just say a blessing for the Bronx, each one of you, 20 seconds, no more. We have to wrap it up. Okay, 20 seconds. Um, Roca, go ahead. 
as one race, as one race, the human race, we are all one with the same purpose, contributing, making a better place of existence, flowing with love. And I pray that the bronze continues to hold space for all that come here looking for a better situation and that we continue to embrace each other's journeys and struggles and that we continue to be as resilient and defiant and spiritual as we have been. This is my prayer to the Bronx. Blessings on you and on all Bronx sites. Blessings on the Bronx and blessings on our, on our borough. And um, how Michael would say, Michael Max, not Bronx strong. I learned that from him uh, recently. <laughs> Yeah, Bronx, you throw your ex the ex up. for the Bronx, Bronx. Oh, I know. Thank you. Thank you. 